It is a great pleasure for us uh, to be uh, in the European Parliament uh, in its new composition. It will be the first hearing after uh, the new Parliament has uh, come to work uh, for us to present uh, one of the reports of Chamber 2. And I will use the opportunity to say a few words uh, about our chamber. Uh, we have already been presenting a number of uh, interesting subjects to this committee, such as urban transport, uh, rail signaling, high-speed rail, um, air traffic management. Uh, our chamber, of course, is responsible for investment, uh, for cohesion, growth and inclusion. And uh, very recently we have published uh, a product that I, I think could be of quite of interest for, for your committee, which is a landscape uh, review on transport, uh, which if there is interest, of course, we can always uh, come and present. And a few, just a few subjects in the pipeline that I would like to mention briefly. Roads connecting European regions is upcoming. Innovation and Networks Executive Agency, transport flagships, urban mobility, it was uh, already mentioned in the previous discussion, EU cultural investments for next year, electrical recharging infrastructure, uh, again transport flagships, international benchmarking, and in the context of the really previous discussion, the EU co-funded investments in tourism, that uh, once it's ready, we would be happy again to, to come and present. But the topic of the day is the special report uh, on the modernization, as you said, of air traffic uh, management uh, uh, system. Has it uh, added value or not? Um, you, you mentioned, Madam Chair, that it's a bit of a pessimistic uh, title and uh, maybe pessimistic overall conclusion. I would say it's realistic because, of course, there are some improvements, but uh, we cannot uh, uh, omit to mention uh, the shortcomings and uh, the problems. Uh, with an average 30,000 flights per day, the air traffic in Europe requires a robust, harmonized and modern management system. In this context, back in uh, 2005, the EU launched the program known as CESAR to harmonize and modernize the air traffic management systems and procedures across Europe. These systems have traditionally been developed at national level, but overall the EU has committed 3.8 billion euros to CESAR between 2005 and 2020, of which 2.5 billion were earmarked to support the deployment of such systems and procedures. In November 2017, we published a first special report on the topic, focusing on the single European sky, which uh, covered a number of uh, regulatory instruments, as well as the definition and the development of CSER. And this current special report looks at the third phase, actually, the deployment of projects designed to modernize the air traffic management. In particular, we examined whether they were justified, well implemented, and whether they have improved the performance of the European air traffic management. Now, normally the practice is that the reporting member presents the report, but since the reporting member for this particular report, Mr. Pufan, has left the court because his mandate expired, I would kindly ask, if you allow, Madam Chair, the uh, uh, responsible for the audit, Mr. Um, uh, De Fuente, who uh, would present and answer uh, questions uh, on the particular subject. Please. Avec grand plaisir, donc je... Thank you very much. I will now give the floor to Louise Delaf from Fuente. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, and also Mrs. Ivanova for the introduction. So, and I would like to thank you, the committee, for inviting the court to uh, present this special report today. Uh, my name is Luis de la Fuente, as it has been just said, and I, I've been a member of the, of the team that has conducted this, this audit. So, Okay. Oops, too fast. Okay. So in my presentation, I will basically cover four points. Um, what did we look at? Uh, what questions did we ask? What did we find? And also what the court is recommending for future action. So the subject of, of our analysis. As you know, CESAR is the technological uh, pillar of the Single European Sky Initiative and aims at the technological modernization of air traffic management in Europe. CESAR has been constructed around three phases. The first phase was the definition that started in 2005. Then it went into the development phase that is still ongoing. And finally, the deployment phase that started in 2014. 
As already mentioned, um, EU financial support to the CESAR project has, been, uh, has reached 3.8 billion from the period from 2005 until 2020, and of which 2.5 million has been uh, earmarked to the deployment phase. Also, by mention by Mrs. Ivanova, the court already published the first report on the single European Sky Initiative in 2017. And here we analyze some uh, key regulatory elements of the, of the project, of the initiative, namely the performance and charging scheme and the functional space blocks. But also we took the opportunity to look into the first two phases of CESAR, the definition and the development phase. At that time, we did not touch upon uh, the deployment phase because it was too early to, to do so. So this, uh, this, on this report we are presenting today is specifically devoted to the analysis of the deployment phase. <clears throat> so what questions did we ask? Um, the CESAR deployment project uh, is, com it is comprised by two main elements or components. On one side, there is a regulatory framework which obliges member states or certain stakeholders within member states to deploy certain technologies. And then there is a financial support to do so. For both elements, we have analyzed whether they were justified in terms of EU added value, if they were implemented in a way that represents an efficient use of EU resources, and if they contributed to improving the performance of European air traffic management. We come now into uh, our observations, which are described in the report. I would like to highlight four key observations that we have in our report. First is that EU regulation, the regulatory framework for air traffic management and modernization, has added value despite some shortcomings. We see that the regulation has allowed coordinated action, has brought a network perspective and has helped to mitigate the last mover advantage when different stakeholders are requested, are requested to invest in new technologies. And this, and you can see maybe in the slide, in a context where traffic is growing, but at the same, at the same time, delays are growing. However, we have identified that the regulation has some shortcomings. In particular, we identified some functionalities in the so-called pilot common project regulation that were not ready for deployment, they were not mature enough, or did not require synchronized deployment across different stakeholders. Moreover, we found that the absence of penalties in case of non-compliance is detrimental for its implementation. The second key observation was about the funding. We say that the EU funding was largely unnecessary, and we base this statement in two evidences. First, the initial rationale for funding was not followed. EU funding was initially intended to compensate negative business cases of certain stakeholders, particularly airborne stakeholders. But in reality, what we have seen is that 88% of the 1.6 billion euros awarded until 2017 have gone to ground stakeholders. Secondly, the majority of the projects that we audited did not need EU funding. Why? Because they were decided or launched before the EU funding decisions. And also in the case of ground stakeholders, we have to say that their investments, particularly for air navigation service providers, their investments are funded by the air navigation charges paid by expert users. So in fact, they don't have a negative business case. The third key observation is that we have identified weaknesses in the implementation that have further reduced the effectiveness of EU funding. And here we identified a lack of adequate prioritization in the first two years of the deployment calls, so 2014 and 2015, where the majority of the money was awarded, about 1 billion euro. Second, the clustering of projects did not aid to their synchronization. The way of the presenting the application by grouping project was based on administrative criteria to facilitate the management of grants rather than on technical criteria. In addition, the aggregated information presented in these grouped applications for funding 
limited the capacity of scrutiny of the uh, Innovation and Network Executive Agency, INEA, in charge of the assessment of the, of the applications. Finally, a potential conflict of interest not sufficiently mitigated. And here we refer to some of the actions undertaken by the SESAR deployment manager, which is composed by some, but not all, beneficiaries. For instance, the deployment manager screens their own members' applications and may influence the allocation of funds through proposing a splitting of applications or setting priorities within the groupings. And we saw that this has not been always done with sufficient documentation and transparency. The last key observation was that the improvements in, air, in European air traffic management are still to be demonstrated. Deployment is still, uh, still ongoing. It will last until 2025-2026. But the observed risk of delays is increasing. In addition, the monitoring of actual performance improvements is challenging and requires a sound methodology for its measurement, which is still under development. So this <clears throat> takes me to the last point of this uh, presentation, which is what the court is recommending for future action. In our report, we include five recommendations, which are the following. First, to improve the focus of common projects by ensuring that the functionalities are ready for implementation, are mature, and require multi-stakeholder synchronization, one of the key elements of CSR deployment. Second, to reinforce the effectiveness of common projects by strengthening their enforcement mechanisms. Third, to review the use financial support for ATM modernization, and this would include two layers. In the short term, limit the funding to two types of activities, maintaining the deployment program and associated technical coordination activities, and second, compensating stakeholders for negative business cases in projects requiring multi-stakeholders involvement. And the second layer is for the future beyond the current multi-annual financial framework, where we ask to set out clear objectives for funding and a time frame for their achievement. The fourth recommendation is review and formalize the preparation and submission of applications for funding. This would include two actions. First, clarify, streamline and formalize the roles of the CESAR deployment manager as regards the applications for funding. And second, for future calls for proposals, to require that applications reflect and support the technical and not only the administrative dimension of coordination. The fifth and last recommendation is to ensure appropriate monitoring of performance benefits. So they should be measured and compared with expectations. And in the future, the targets proposed in the performance scheme should also take such improvements or such performance benefit into account. So with this, uh, I conclude my presentation and I thank you all of you for your attention. Thank you very much.